Hey, good morning, Lighthouse Church family and anyone that's watching us live today uh, from the church house here at Lighthouse Church here in Bullard. We're so excited that you've chosen to worship with us today. And, and again, like we said last week, we just ask you to pray for us. We ask you to join in. I ask you right now that if you're doing anything other than watching this service, you just put everything aside. For the next hour or so, I'm going to ask you to engage in worship to engage in prayer, and to engage in the Word with us, just like you were in this building with us today. Because God has something powerful for us, but He needs to get our full attention. So I'm going to tell you to go ahead. If you don't have your Bible, I'm going to encourage you to get your Bible out because I'm not going to have the Scriptures. If you t typically take notes, make sure you have your spiral notebook and your pen out because you're going to have some Scriptures to write down. But first of all, we're going to go into worship, a time of worship. I have posted the songs on Facebook. Uh, if you were able to see that post last night, we're going to be doing Build My Life by Pat, Pat Barrett. We're going to be doing Redeemed, and we're going to be doing Reckless Love. And if you, did, if you don't have the words, I've got the words on the Facebook page. You can pull up and follow along. Or, again, you can pull it up on your phone or however so you can sing along with us. Listen, don't stand back and watch Barry perform. This is not a performance for you today, guys. This is us leading you into worship. So when Barry begins to worship, you worship with us. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you that we can be with you this morning. And Lord God, I know your word says we're two or three are gathered in your name. You're in our midst. Father, you're with us, whether you're, we're in this building together, Lord, or whether we're joined across the Facebook. Wherever we are today in the very, the very rooms we're sitting in, Lord God, your spirit is residing with us. Thank you for that, Lord. Thank you that, to know that we can join together and know that you're there. Father, I pray right now as we enter into a place of worship that you would just have your way. Father, we've got a plan laid out. We've come prepared to do certain things. But God, it's about what you want for us. So I pray, Lord God, for the next little bit, the next 30 minutes, the next hour, however long we're together. Lord, our focus would not be on this virus or all these distractions, Lord God, but they would be on you and you alone. Father, I pray for Barry right now as he brings forth the worship. I ask you to bless him, to touch him, to anoint him, to lead him, Lord. I pray right now for the preaching of the word, Lord. I pray that you would anoint this vessel of clay, Lord God. I am just a, I am a broken vessel, Lord God. I pray that you would anoint it mightily, Lord. Your word is already anointed. So anoint me, Lord God. Give me your peace. And Lord God, speak to us today, I pray. Have your way. It's in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Worthy of every 
couldn't earn it And I don't deserve it Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending Reckless love of God Amen, amen, amen Aren't you glad, hallelujah, we can praise the name of Jesus, amen? Aren't you glad for that reckless love, amen? The reckless love that would do everything in his power to get to us. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. God is so good. Most of y'all will probably notice that I don't have a computer sitting in front of me today, and that's because... Well, the Lord had a different direction we're going to go with this morning, but God has a plan. Amen. But before we get into God's word, I do want to stop long enough to just mention uh, how we are taking up tithes and offering for those who are st still able to give or want to give and support the church. Uh, you can drop it by the church, obviously, while we're here. Uh, you can mail it to the church if you're still the check writer, P.O. Box 179. I'm sorry, 197. Let me get the numbers right. 197, Bullard, Texas, 75757. Or you can go to our website and click on the Give button. And our website, again, is www.bullard. Back up. My brain's, my brain's still in worship. It is www.lighthousechurchbullard.com. That's lighthousechurchbullard.com. And then I've added another way for you guys that are tech savvy. You can actually text the word GIVE to no, the number 833 Five seven two zero two three nine, and that will also give you a secure link to go to our tithely giving portal to also give online. Technology is great, guys. It's awesome that we can still be able to support our church and do what God's called us to do, and it's also awesome that we can bring you the word over digital means. So I praise God for digital means, but I am looking forward to the day we can get back into this house together, amen, and worship together. And I want to go ahead and throw this out. We were talking about that this morning. One of the things we are planning on doing, regardless or not of whether we are allowed to have a, a public service, a together service on Easter, unless something obviously changes drastically, our plan right now is to pull a trailer up outside, to set up outside, and to give anyone who wants to an opportunity to come drive up and have a worship and the word and everything, communion, everything with us live. Now, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to put some suggestions out there on how we're going to do things after today. I'm not going to do that now because I don't want to take up that time. But like I say, we're going to have a drive up service on Easter if we can't have it in the church. Now, I'm believing God that we're going to be able to have it here in the church. And that's what we want. But just in case, we're going to have an alternative plan so we can actually get together on Easter Sunday, on Resurrection Sunday, and worship God together on this campus. So stay tuned for more uh, a little later on that. And I, like I say, I'll communicate that via Facebook um, a little later. Also, if you need prayer or you have any questions, Facebook is the easiest way to communicate with me. Just message the church, message me directly and say, hey, Pastor Wayne, I need prayer specifically for this, and I'll be there for you, and I'll respond. I'll follow up with you as quick as I can. But that's the easiest way to get a hold of me is through Facebook message. Amen? Amen. Let's pray again. Father, I thank you that we can worship you. I thank you, Lord God, for your sweet, sweet presence that I sense in here today, Lord God. And I pray for the, those who are worshiping with us via Facebook Live right now. I pray that your presence is resonating inside their houses with them this very minute. I pray, Lord God, that they can tangibly sense your presence as they have worshipped you this morning. Now, Father, I pray for this time in the service where your word is going to go forth. I stand upon your truth that your word will not return void. I'm believing that, Lord. I'm believing that your word is going to speak to hearts. It's going to change lives and it's going to change us, Lord God, that we may be more like you I pray, Lord God, for the peace that surpasses all understanding right now to resonate from this house, resonate into the, the homes of the people that are watching, whether they're watching live or whether they may be watching later today or even later this week, Lord God, 
that your peace would just resonate in their homes and that they would know, Lord God, that you're the only answer in the midst of this time of crisis, this time of pandemic, Lord God. Whatever word somebody wants to use to bring fear on this nation, Lord, this time we are going through, Lord, may our eyes be fixed on you and you alone. It's in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, amen, amen, and I'll amen for you. Uh, like I say today, I'm not going to have my computer because I'm not going to be uh, going down a bunch of sermon notes and I don't have any terrible jokes to tell you or anything like that. I just want to share from my heart today, if that's okay. And, uh, you know, I know that over the years since I've been ministering, God has done things differently. I mean, there's been times where I'll come into a service and I'll have a sermon laid out and I will know exactly what I'm going to preach. And man, I just, I'm comfortable with that. But you know, these last couple of days, God has really been resonating in my spirit. Uh, something to share with you guys. It's been, he's been dealing directly with me. And one thing I know for sure is when God is dealing with me about something, he wants me to share it. It's not something I just need to keep in. I mean, some folks, I mean, I understand you keep it in and that's, but man, when it's in my heart, I feel like I need to share it. And I can't find any other way to share it and get my words out other than this way because it's just too much to type. So just bear with me today and uh, just kind of follow along uh, in the word as I give you the scriptures because I want you to see what God's been speaking to me. But the first thing I want to really talk to you about or I want you to look at is in Hebrews. I've got the scripture behind me. I don't know if you can see it, but it's Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. The reason I want you to look at that scripture is that scripture is going to catapult us into what God is telling me. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. And specifically, when I read this scripture, I want you guys that are listening in, the guys that are here helping with the service, I don't want to read this just for you to hear. I want you to read it with me. And if you, don't, if you can't see it, look in your word and read it from your word. But I want this to get in your spirit today. Before we even share the message God has laid on my heart, I want you to get this. And the scripture says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I want you to say that again in your houses today, where you're sitting. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I'm going to take it one step further, and I'm going to say it like this. What Jesus did before, he is doing now, and he will continue to do. So if you've ever been in this mindset, Jesus did it once, it's never going to happen again, or wait a minute, that was Old Testament, that's not for me, I want you to stop and realize the God I serve is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And for what he once did, he is doing today, and he will continue to do going forward. And I want us to grab that in our hearts and our spirits as we read his word today. Because sometimes when we read his word, we say, hey, wait a minute. That was for the people of Israel. Or wait a minute. That was Old Testament. Or wait a minute. That's really not for me. And we want to pick and choose what is in the word that we think may be for us. And guess what? We tend to pick the things that we relate to and we agree with and we like. That uh, kind of fits our lifestyle, you know, that makes us say, I guess this is okay because I, it doesn't make me feel uncomfortable. But I want you to get today in your heart that the God I serve has not changed. In the situation we're facing right now, guys, our eyes are consumed with this COVID-19 and what everything the government's telling us and what they're not telling us. We're so distracted we don't know if, it's, if we're coming or going, guys. I've been to Walmart again this week. God pray for me because every time we go to Walmart, we, we get a different picture. But you've probably been to Walmart or Brookshire's and you're seeing the same thing. The panic's still there, guys. The shelves are still empty. So no matter what we say to ourselves and what we share, people are still worried about what's going on. But today, I want you to understand something. I want you to get this. And I'm not preaching fear not. That was last week. And if you want to hear a sermon on fear, go back to last week's sermon and listen to that because, hey, listen, it'll speak to you. But today I want you to think about something. God has not changed. He's not changed. He didn't. He's not asleep. He's not slumbering. He's not surprised. 
He's not caught off guard. He is still the same God. So if you'll turn with me in your Bibles this morning to 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, I'm going to read that scripture. And then I'm going to just kind of share with you just a little bit what God has been speaking to me this week. And it's really been just resonating in my heart. So 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, and most everyone watching this service today knows this scripture. So really and truly, I probably don't even have to quote it or read it. You can probably do it for me. And some of you probably put it in the comments. Oh, Pastor Wade, I know this scripture. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin and heal their land. We know the scripture. It's the scripture that we love to, to preach, we love to talk about, we love to shout. But look, right now, in, in where we are in this desperate time, this is a scripture that we need to grab hold of and realize that the same God that spoke this scripture, and I want you to realize today, church, before we go any further, this is not just penned in God's word. This is God's personal response to Solomon's prayer. This is God responding and saying, if my people. So I'm going to stop right there and we're going to go back and we're going to look at Solomon's prayer. But I want to say something before I go any further. This scripture is for men and women of faith. Ones who have placed their faith in Jesus. So if you're listening to us today and you would say, Pastor Wayne, I'm not a Christian. I just popped on. And I wanted to see what this was all about. What's Lighthouse Church all about? What are you going to share today? What were y'all going to... I just wanted to see. Well, you touched the end of the good day. This scripture may not be for you, but there is a scripture for you. And that is, all have fallen short. All have fallen short and need the glory of God. They all need Jesus. We all need forgiveness. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. That's a scripture for you today. So as I preach this sermon today, you're going to probably say, well, you're saying the children of God, if the children of God, if the children of God. Well, don't dismiss that because you too can become a child of God today. You can place your faith in Jesus and you can seek repentance and you can turn from your wicked ways. Amen. And God can change you and you can join us in prayer because church, that's what we need to do. As a church, as men and women of faith, we need to join together and we need to bombard the, the heavenlies for our nation. We need to quit worrying about what ifs or what, what could be's or what might be's or what they're telling us and quit placing our faith in stimulus and in our president. And we've got to change all that and put our faith in God and say, okay, God, I know you are who you say you are. And I'm going to trust you and I'm going to stand on your word and I'm going to pray and you're going to change the direction of the things that are going on right now. And if we get to that point, church, I believe God is going to do something powerful. You're saying, well, Pastor Wayne, why do you, what do you want to read today? What do you want to go over? I want you to see in the scripture what Solomon prayed. I want you to go back to 2 Chronicles chapter 6. And I want you to go, and I, again, I don't have a bunch of points today. I don't have some funny story to tell you. I want to challenge you to see what the word of God says. And I want us as men and women of faith to join together. And I stand upon God's truth. So I'm going to read some scripture. And you can follow along in your, in your uh, choice of Bible, whatever version you've got. I'm actually reading out of the modern English version today. So if you've got something else, just mark it. Come back after the service and read it again to yourself. Because I want you to realize the prayer Solomon prayed that generated the response in 2 Chronicles 14, 7 and 14. I want you to see what he said first. Solomon was wise. Solomon knew what he needed to be praying. He knew how to get in contact with God. And what's going on right now is Solomon had just finished building the temple, the second temple. He had just finished getting it ready. And now the Ark of the Covenant's in there. And he has come before the people. And he is now beginning to pray to God and saying, I've done what you told me to do, Lord. And I want you to listen to the scripture. Starting in verse 12, it says, then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord, before all the assembly of Israel, and spread out his hands. For Solomon made a bronze platform and set it in the midst of the enclosure. 
It was five cubits in length, five cubits in width, and three cubits in height. And he stood on it and knelt down before all the assembly of Israel and spread his hands to heaven. What was he doing, church? He was humbling himself before God. He was humbling himself before the people of Israel who had joined with him for this dedication. And the scripture goes on to say, and he said, O Lord God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven or on the earth. I want to stop right there and I want you to realize this morning, there is no one like our God. Amen. Man, if you don't know that this morning, if you don't know how much God loves you, there is no one like our God. Our God loves you so much, he will do anything in his power to get a, get a hold of you and so you will know him personally. Guys, he is here with us right now in our midst, and he is speaking across the land, not just through Lighthouse Church, but through many churches right now. There is no God like our God. His love for us is never-ending. His grace abounds. His mercy just endures forever. Our God is a mighty God. But he goes on and says, Who keeps covenants in mercy with your servants, who walks before you with all their heart. You have kept what you promised your servant David, my father, you have both spoken with your mouth and fulfilled it with your hand as it is this day. And now, O God of Israel, keep what you promised your servant David, my father, saying, You will not lack a man sitting on the throne of Israel before me, if only your sons take heed to their way to walk in my law as you have walked before me. And now, O Lord God of Israel, may your word be confirmed which you have spoken to your servant David. Verse 18. Pay, pay close attention now guys. For, for will God indeed dwell with man on the earth? He's asking a question in his prayer. Will God indeed dwell with man on the earth? And I'm going to tell you today church. The answer is yes. He's dwelling with us right now by his Holy Spirit. He is with us here in Lighthouse Church. He is with you in your homes. He is with us by his Spirit. And then he goes on to say, the heavens, even the highest heavens, are not able to contain you. Much less the house that I have built. How, how powerful is that? There's nothing that contain, can, can, can contain our God. He is so great and so mighty. But then he goes on and says, but respond to the prayer of your servant to his plea. O Lord my God. Listen to the cry and prayer of your servant who prays before you, that your eyes might be open towards this house both day and night, to this place that you have said that you will set your name in order to hear the prayer of your servant from this place. And listen to the pleas of your servant and your people Israel when they pray towards this place. And may you respond from heaven the place of your dwelling so that you will hear and forgive. And then he goes on to pray even more. And now he's going to get a little bit more specific. And he says, if a man sins against his companion and the companion swears and puts him under a curse and the wrong man comes with an oath before your altar at this temple, then you will hear from heaven and you will act and judge your servants to repay the guilty one by bringing his way on his head and to vindicate the innocent one by rendering to him according to his righteous behavior. You're thinking, Pastor Wayne, why are you reading all this? I want you to get this today. I want you to hear what he's praying to God before the temple is or as the temple is dedicated. I want you to grab hope of what he is saying so that you understand why God responded the way he responded. I want you to hear Solomon in his wisdom. He's not just praying a prayer to be heard. He is wise and he is praying a prayer that the people not only need to hear, but God is hearing. And I want you to hear it. Verse 24, he goes on to say, If your people Israel are struck before enemies because they have sinned against you, and they return and confess your name and pray and seek your favor in this house, then you will hear from heaven and forgive the sin of your people Israel. And you will bring them back to the land that you gave them and their fathers. And then he goes on and says, When the sky is shut up and there is no rain, because they have sinned against you, and pray towards this place and confess your name and turn from their sin when you afflict them, 
Then you will hear from heaven and forgive the sin of your servants and your people Israel, because you teach them the good path in which they walk. And you will send rain on the land that you have given to your people as a possession. Then he goes on and says, when there is a famine in the land, or when there is pestilence, blight, mildew, winged locusts, or grasshopper, or when enemies besiege them in the land, up to the city gates, in whatever plague or sickness, whatever prayer or plea that is made by any man, or by all your people Israel, then each man knows his own affliction and his sorrow, and stretches out his hands towards his house. Then you will hear from heaven, in place of habitation of your dwelling, and forgive, and you will render each according to his conduct, and you will know their hearts. You alone know the heart of people. Come on, church. God knows our heart. Why are we doing what we're doing today? Are we joining together today because we're in panic mode? Because we don't have answers? Are we joining together because we know the one who does have an answer? His name is Jesus Christ. I'm coming to you today and I'm bringing a service forth today not because I'm in panic mode or because I'm worried. I'm coming to you today because I know the one who has the answer. I'm coming to you because I know the one who holds the world in his hand. His name is Jesus. And I want you to get that today. I want you to see that, not just on this service, but I want you to see it in his word. He hears us. He knows what we're going through. He has not forsaken us. He has not left us. We are not alone. And if you were in the church, that'd be a time you could say amen. So if you're at home, you can say amen there too. Then it goes on in verse 31. It says, so that they may fear you and walk in your ways all the days that they live on the land that you have given to our fathers. When foreigners are not from your people, Israel, and coming from a distant land because of your great name, mighty hand and outstretched arm, and they come and pray towards his house, then hear from heaven, from your dwelling place, and act on everything from which the foreigner calls on you, that all the people of the earth may know your name and fear you, as do your people Israel. And that you may know that this house which I have built is called by your name. It's when your people go out to battle against the enemies in the way that you send them. And when they pray to you, to, pray to you towards this city that you have chosen in this house that I have built in your name, then hear from heaven their prayer and plea and act for their cause. Verse 36, church, listen. Listen to what Solomon's praying. When they sin against you, for there is no one who does not sin. When they sin against you, for there's no one who does not sin. In verse 36, and you are angry against them and give them, their, give them to their enemies and they are taken captive to a land, whether distant or near, and they turn their hearts in the land that they have been captive, been taken captive. And they repent and seek your favor in the land of captive saying, captivity, saying, We have sinned and done wrong and acted wickedly. And if they turn in repentance to you with all their heart and all their soul in the land of their captivity that they were taken to, pray and towards the land that you have given to the, their fathers and towards the city that you have chosen and toward the house that you have built for your name. Then hear from heaven, from your dwelling place, the prayer and supplication and maintain their calls and forgive the people who have sinned against you. Now, oh, my God, my my may your eyes be open and your your ears attentive to the prayer that I offer in this place. Now, rise up, O oh Lord God, to your resting place, both you and and the ark of your strength, and let your priest, O Lord God, be clothed in salvation, and your loyal ones rejoice in goodness. O Lord God, do not turn your face from your anointed. Remember the mercies of your servant David. Then in verse the chapter 7, verse 1, I'm going to read four more verses. And when Solomon finished praying, I want you to get this. Solomon's been praying, and he's been saying a whole lot, church. He's saying, look, we're going to sin. We're going to mess up. We're going to be in, we're going to have problems. We're going to go away from you. And when we turn back to you, and when we repent, forgive us. And when Solomon had finished praying, fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and sacrifices. 
and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. And the priests were not able to, to enter into the house of the Lord, for the glory of the Lord filled the Lord's house. Hallelujah. And all the sons of Israel saw when the fire came down and the glory of the Lord came on the temple, and they bowed their faces low to the ground on the pavement and worshiped, confessing, The Lord is good. Hallelujah. The Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. And then he goes on to say, Then the king and all the people begin to make sacrifices. And if you continue to read, which I would encourage you to read, they're going to make several thousand sacrifices as they continue to pray and dedicate the temple. But I want you to get a hold of what happened here. Solomon went to God. He went before the people and he prayed a prayer, a powerful prayer of repentance and said, God, I know we're going to mess up and I know we're going to get away from you as a nation. And when we do, I ask you to forgive us when we come back to you. Church, the word that God has been speaking to me right now in this, in the midst of this crisis, in the midst of this chaos, is the men and women of faith need to join together and bombard the heavens for our nation. We need to quit getting consumed with all that's going on and be allowing our own personal walks to be filled with worry and fear. And we need to join together and bombard heaven and say, God, I know we've sinned. I know I have personally sinned. I know I have walked in uh, disbelief and worry and doubt at times in my life. But God, forgive me. God, forgive my nation for the things that are going on. Father, I, I, I repent for not only myself, I repent for my nation and say, forgive us as we turn back to you. Because church, America has walked away from God. We have taken God out of everything. We wonder why God allows things to take place. Well, can I tell you, when you kick God out of places, he's not allowing them. He's no longer there. We've kicked him out of our schools. We've kicked him out of our nation. We've kicked him out of our homes. And we've tried to kick him out of our churches. Mm. we've tried to kick him out of our churches. We want to do it our way. We've got our plan. We've got our motives. To me, what's going on right now, God is calling us back to a place where, we, where reality can set in. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. My God is in control. And I want you to get that today. Throughout the history of the Bible with God's people and throughout our history in America, there have been many times of trial. A lot of things happen in the Old Testament. It's a revolving door, guys. Men and women of Israel, children of Israel, they would serve God, and then they would turn their back on God. God would let destruction come, then they would turn back to God. God would bless them, and he would protect them, and he would set them back on the right track. They'd get along going just fine, and they would turn their back on God again. What did they do? They turned back to God. He would set them back in the right course. He'd get them going the way they should again. He'd bless them. And this went on over and over again. I look at America right now, and I, and I was telling Brother David Claiborne and stuff right before the service, for the last hundred years, I believe God has been trying to get our attention as we get further and further away from him but especially the last 40 or so years, as we have tried to take God out of everything that has anything to do with God. It's time for the church to rise up and say enough. Enough. My God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And even though we have pushed him out of our nation, and you can say, Pastor Wayne, I don't believe we pushed God out of our nation. Well, you need to take that up with the Lord. You can say, Pastor Wayne, I don't believe what's going on right now is from God. I believe it's from the pits of hell. Well, I agree. It's probably from the pits of hell, but God can intervene. God could stop it. God could put us back on the right track. But he's waiting for us to rise up and do exactly what he said in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. But I want to go a little further before I get to 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. I want you to realize they had thousands of sacrifices. They were getting ready for this dedication, and they had done all this. It lasted about seven or eight days, and, and Solomon had gone home. And when Solomon had gone home, if you'll jump ahead to verse 12, 
He had gone home and he had gone to bed. He had dedicated the temple. There were thousands of sacrifices. If I'm not mistaken, there was a hundred and something thousand different things sacrificed. Bulls and sheep and just thousands of sacrifices. But he had gone home and gone to bed. And then the scripture says in verse 12, Then the Lord appeared to Solomon at night. And he said to Solomon, This is not Solomon's words. This is what God said. I have heard your prayer. Man, guys, every time I read that, my heart just leaps inside of me. I can't get this. I can't shake this. He said, I have heard your prayer. Some of you need to hear that today. Some of you need to realize that God is listening to you. You feel like I do sometimes that you don't feel like your prayer even leaves the room, but God is listening to you. He hears your prayer. And he says, he goes on, he says, I have chosen for myself in this place a house of sacrifice. Verse 13. Get this, guys. Verse 13. When I shut up the heaven and there is no rain, or when I command the locusts to devour the land, or send pestilence on my people. Guys, not if this happens. He's not saying if this happens. He's saying there's going to be trials and tribulations and we're going to go through things in our life. Not just his children, Israel. Guys, remember, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if you want to dismiss this scripture and say, you know what, that was for Israel, that was for what he did in the old times, then you're going to miss a message from God today. You're going to miss an opportunity to make a difference in this land today. He says, I'm going to cause droughts. I'm going to cause uh, plagues. I'm going to cause pestilence. I'm going to cause these things. But why does he do it? Why does God allow, if God is a loving God and a merciful God, a God full of grace, why does he allow that to sweep across our nation? Oh, America's the greatest nation on earth. We're a godly nation. Baloney, guys. We've turned our backs on God. We've spit in God's face. We've taken him out of everything, and we expect God to keep being a merciful, uh, God full of grace, God full of love. And we want to say, you know what? If this is God, then I don't want nothing to do with that God because he's, he's putting us through all this. When all God is doing is he's saying, I am still here. I am still God. And I am still in control. And if you will just turn to me, I will be there. Verse 14, church. Verse 14. If my people, and I've had some debates this week with someone regarding that scripture, if my people. Yes, every created person on this world is God's people. Everybody. God created everyone. There's no one that God didn't create. That's not what he's saying here. He goes on to say, who are called by my name. Everyone on this earth today is not called Christian. They're not called child of God. They don't refer to themselves as children of God. So he just right quick separates this scripture and says, this is not for you unbelievers. This scripture is not for you people who have never going into a relationship with me. This is for children of God. This is for men and women who've placed their faith in Jesus Christ, who are now my sons and daughters in faith. This is for you. And he goes on to say, well, humble themselves. Well, what does humbling look like? Well, to Solomon, it meant he got on his knees before the people and lifted his hands to heaven. Well, Pastor Wayne, what do you think humbling looks like? Well, what does it look like to you? If you go to Daniel chapter 9 and you look in Daniel chapter 9 where Daniel's repenting for the nation and doing exactly what Solomon did and praying for the children of Israel and praying a prayer of repentance. He got down into sackcloth and, and, and ashes and began to uh, get down on his knees and face Jerusalem and get, began to pray a prayer of repentance as well. That's what it looked like to Daniel. Depends on who you are. Depends on what God is telling you to do, what humbleness looks like. Humbleness to me is getting on my face before God 
and separating myself from everybody else that, that may be distracting me and may be trying to taint my mind with things that are not necessarily from God and saying, I'm going to humble myself, God, and say, God, I know you're God and you're mighty. And although you're seated up in heaven above all this, you are still in control. And in a moment's notice, God, you are great and powerful and you can intervene. And I'm going to cry out to him and I'm going to say, God, I know who you are. And I'm going to pray. And I'm going to ask God. I'm going to ask God to forgive me for I failed him. I'm not going to stand before you today and tell you I'm perfect. I failed God. But I'm going to ask God for forgiveness. And I'm going to seek his forgiveness. And then I'm going to, after I receive his forgiveness, because church, I trust his word. His word says, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you from all and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. I stand upon his word. I may not be perfect. I may fall short. But when I do, I cry out to God and say, God, forgive me, because I know without Jesus, there is no hope. There is no eternity for me that includes heaven. It'll be hell and hell only. And I know that. So I come humbly to God and I pray and I seek his face and I pray for forgiveness first for me. And then I begin to cry out for this nation. What does it look like? Well, Pastor Wayne, what does it look like? You're praying to, for this nation. What does it look like? God, forgive us for the millions of babies we kill every year. God, forgive, forgive us for feeding and, and uh sharing pornography all over this world like we do. God, forgive us for taking you out of everything that has anything to do with God and taking him out of our homes, our churches, our schools, and then expecting God to intervene. God, forgive me for my worry. God, forgive me for my doubt. God, forgive me for the church not rising up to a place that we should be and making sure that your word goes out and people are challenged to change their lives. Listen, guys, we are not trying to manipulate you. We're saying God changes us. He changes us from glory to glory. He's not looking for a name on a card this morning. He's not looking for you to join a church. He is looking for you to join his church. He is looking for you to cry out to his son, Jesus, and repent to him and say, forgive me, Jesus. For any doubt. Forgive me Jesus. For my sin. And if we believe that. If we believe this word is from God. And we believe that the scripture is true. And he is the same yesterday. Today. And forever. If we believe that. Do you believe that this morning? Do you really believe that this is his word and he is the same God and he does not change? Then I want you to grab a hold of this word and I want you to humble yourself and I want you to pray and seek his face and turn from, his, turn from your wicked ways. Join us in prayer. Join us in the prayer of agreement and then see what God will do. Then I will hear from heaven, just like he does in the word. He heard Solomon. He heard Daniel. He heard Stephen. He heard Paul. He heard all the disciples. He heard everybody that has ever prayed to him. And he will hear you and I. And will forgive their sin. Father, thank you that you will forgive me when I fail you. Thank you. That your grace and mercy never ends. Thank you that that one that's listening to us today on live Facebook can repent, and you will accept their repentance, and you will that you they can ask for forgiveness, and you will forgive them. But this is the best part, guys. The last part of the scripture is the best part. Yeah, being forgiven is important. That's important, guys. Without forgiveness, we're not going to go to heaven. The last part says, and he will heal our land. I'm going to tell you today, I'm going to set my Bible down. I'm going to tell you today, there's been a lot of times, a lot of, if you pay attention to what's going on, and guys, I watch a lot of 
of this, what's going on. I'm not going to lie. I watch a lot. I listen. And so many times there are people that are standing on those platforms that they want to just kind of drop a little trickle of God's word. But there's no one with the boldness to stand up and say it as it is. I want you to know today, I don't care how much we wash our hands, how much we social distance, how much we do all these things that our government is telling us to do. It, do. Yeah, they're going to help us. I get that. But when they say that and then they say, and then we will heal our land, that's baloney. Only God, Amen. only God can heal this land from the sickness that is running rampant. In church, it's not pornography, it's not abortion, it's not COVID-19. The sickness that's all throughout America right now is a three-letter word called sin. And our nation, our land, needs to be healed from sin. So when I pray, heal our land, Lord, I'm saying heal it from sin. Because that sin, that three-letter word sin, covers sin. Every bit of it. All of it. Everything that we deal with can be summed up with sin. Pastor Wayne, do you want COVID-19 to go away? I absolutely do. Do I know God can do it? No doubt in my mind. Do I want to see us return back to where we can have church and, and everybody be together? Absolutely. And we're going to do that. That's going to happen. I speak that in Jesus' name. We're going to have church. We're going to have church as a church family in this building together outside. And we're going to have church. And there's going to be revival because people are going to realize in the midst of all this that there is only one answer, and his name is Jesus Christ. And I believe that. It ain't about us being perfect. It's not about us not having making mistakes in life. It's about us trusting the one who is perfect and making sure you know who he is, and his name is Jesus. So today, as I begin to close, or as I am closing, I want you to join me, join this church, not just the ones that are on Facebook right now, but everyone that may see this going forward. Join us and begin to pray and seek the face of God. Humbly, church, humbly, whatever that looks like for you. Humbly before God in a place of repentance, turning from our wicked ways, saying, God, forgive us, me, you, and our nation for where we've come. And I'm also praying that you would join with me and you would say, Pastor Wayne, I'm going to agree with you that there would be somebody that would stand up and boldly declare that truth from our nation's Amen. top. Quit dancing around the truth. Quit feeding us a little bit here and there, playing both sides. Because that's what they're doing. They're playing one side and then they're playing the other side. Well, I've got to say this just enough so the Christians that keep listening... But I've got to say this just enough so that my status quo, yeah, I said it, the status quo will keep listening. I'm tired of that game playing. You want to you pick a side and get on it. Quit standing in the middle. It's time for God's people to rise up. There are 15 or 20 pastors right now that are high prolific pastors that have thousands upon thousands of people following them. God, touch, touch them, stir them to stand up and boldly declare your truth. Quit dancing around the truth. Stand on your truth and let's see a mighty revival break out all across this land. God, start with me. Start with Lighthouse Church. Start in the uh, city of Bullard. Start in Texas. Start somewhere. But God, you're looking, the scripture says, your eyes are passing to and fro across this land. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, guys. It hasn't changed. In Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 30, his eyes are passing to and fro across this land, looking for a man, not just a man. It can be a woman or a man, whoever. He's looking for someone to stand in the gap. Come on, that he might not destroy this nation. The scripture, unfortunately, says in Ezekiel that he didn't find anybody. Will he find somebody in 2020? That'll say, I've seen enough in my life that it's time to stand in the gap. Will he say, I've, will someone stand up and say, I've seen enough disaster. I've seen enough sickness. I've seen enough of people turning away from God that I want to make a difference. Are you that person this morning? Are you watching this morning? And you would say, Pastor Wayne, I am willing to stand and believe God with you. I am willing to humble myself and pray and seek his face and turn from my wicked ways, then do it. 
Just do it. Join in with me. Because I'm going to do it, church. I'm praying for every one of you. You say, Pastor Wayne, I feel your prayers. Well, you should because I pray for you every day. If you've been in this church and I have seen you sit in these, these pews, I go down these pews. This is how I do it. I go down these pews and I look in my mind, even though you're not sitting here, and I pray for you. And guess what? Everybody that's been in this church knows if I start on this side, I start with Mary Dowdy because she's right here. And I go to Paul, and I go to Shug, and I go to Lily, and I think of little Kyle Wayne in the nursery. And I, I mean, the same way in the back corner back here with Miss Lanny, or back here with Carla and Sonny, or uh, the Mueller's since they started coming. I can see their faces sitting back there, and Barry and Stephanie, my mom. I mean, I can just look around this room, and even though they're not here today, they're not in this room with me today, I still see their faces, and I still call their names out. Because I'm believing God for revival. I'm believing God to snuff out this virus. I'm believing God to reopen our churches. I'm believing God to reopen our nation to give us a chance to move forward and do what he's called us to do. Do I believe things are going to change? Yes, I do. Why do I believe that? Because I trust God. I believe his word. and His word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And it says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray, and seek his face, and turn from their wicked ways, then he will hear from heaven, forgive our sin, and heal our land. I believe it. It's not going to change. I'm going to stand on it. So, yes, I believe things are going to be different. Do you believe it is the question. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for today. And I pray, Lord God, your word challenges the Everyone that listens to it today, as much as it challenged me, Father, as you spoke to me this last week. I could, church, I couldn't quit thinking about this scripture all week. Every day it resonated in my heart. I pray it challenges us, Lord. That it challenges us to humble ourselves before you. To pray and to seek your face and your face alone and to turn from our wicked ways. Because, Lord, I know you're going to do your part. God, you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. You've always done your part. Every time someone cries out to you, you always come. Guys, if you're away from God this morning, if you're away from the Lord this morning, and you're living in sin, and you're caught up in fear and worry, and you say, Pastor Wayne, I am so far away from God right now, I want you to know that God has not left you. He is right there. He's waiting for you to turn around. He is waiting for you to say, Lord, forgive me. And he's there. Pastor Wayne, you don't understand what I've done. You don't understand the things I've done in my life. But my God's grace and mercy is sufficient. And every time I feel like I have gotten a million miles away from God, when I felt like I was so far away he couldn't hear me, and I just stopped and I said, Lord Jesus, and I turned around and he was there. He was never gone. He wants you to know this morning he's there for you. And if any one of you are listening this morning and, man, you just have never placed your faith in Jesus Christ, today's the day, guys. Today is the day for your salvation. I want you to call out on Jesus right now. His word says if you confess your sins, he is just and faithful to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. You need a Savior. You need to call out to Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus. It's simple. Lord Jesus, forgive me. I'm a sinner. It's that easy. I am a sinner. I want you to be Lord of my life. I confess you as Lord of my life. I trust you with my soul and my eternity. I believe you came and lived a perfect life. That you shed innocent blood on Calvary for me. You died and rose again. I believe that. And I place my faith in that. And I accept that free gift today. Guys, if you pray that simple prayer, Jesus will forgive you and wash you and cleanse you. And it works the same way. If you've gotten away from God, all you have to do is call out to Jesus. I don't know what to pray, Pastor Wayne. Try this. Jesus! That's it. Throw your hands up and say, Jesus, I need you. And he'll be there. Father, I pray right now for anyone listening. I pray, Lord God, that you would just allow your peace that surpasses all understanding to be poured out in their homes and in their lives. 
I pray, Lord God, that they would stand on your word, that they would not allow this virus to distract them from the fact that you are still in, in control and in charge. I pray right now, Lord God, that your peace that surpasses all understanding would invade their homes. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you guys. Uh, thank you for joining us today. We will be back again live next Sunday morning. We will also have some opportunity this, this week to maybe have Bible study and prayer time. Listen, if I pop out a, a, a notice about Zoom, you don't have to join in on Zoom to be a part of the prayer because I'm going to actually put the Zoom on Facebook as well because I want y'all to pray with us. You'll know we're praying. Uh, we're still having prayer on Tuesday nights. There's a few of us that have been praying for weeks now, actually months now. And uh, although we're not inviting the whole masses to come on Tuesday night because we're still keeping it down, uh, if you feel the urge to come pray with us on Tuesday night, we're going to be here at 630. But then I'm going to probably come live as well about 815 for everyone else who wants to join over Facebook uh, to pray. And then join us again next week at 11. We're going to go live again. Pray that God will give us a divine message. But in the meantime, stay safe, put your faith in God, and don't get caught up in all the mess. Love you guys.